JPS ITV. Join JPS in shaping our future. Your input matters as we develop our five-year strategic plan. Help us enhance academics and operations by sharing your ideas. Together, we can create a plan we're all proud of and successfully achieve our goals. We invite you to participate in our upcoming community input session scheduled for April 11th at Cardozo Middle School, 3180 McDowell Road Extension, beginning at 5.30 p.m. To register, scan the QR code on the screen or visit the JPS website, jackson.k12.ms.us. We highly value your input and eagerly anticipate your participation. JPS celebrates five outstanding Wells APAC Elementary School scholars who excelled in every subject earning prestigious recognition as inductees into the National Elementary Honor Society. We're gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty and our school for successfully completing the first semester with an 85 or above average in each subject. There are four qualities that serve as a standard for scholars selected as National Honor Society inductees. We begin with scholarship. Scholarship, come forth. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours reading and studying. Service, come forth. Service is my office. Service can be established in the routine of the days of work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. Leadership, come forth. Leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. Character, come forth. Character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. Each inductee was introduced by a parent. I'm pleased to introduce Elizabeth Cantor. My name is Shannon Frost, the proud mother of Bo Daniel Frost. Madeline is a JPS student through and through, and she would not be here today without the hard work and dedication of the faculty, staff, and fellow students in the Jackson Public School System. I'm so proud to introduce my daughter, Rhea Hunter. Rhea is a fifth grade student here at Wells. Uh, my daughter, Jane, Oh, she's more than deserving of being here, and I'm so, so, so proud of her. Special guest speaker, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, praised these young JPS scholars for their remarkable accomplishments. Behind the students being honored here today are teachers who have made a lasting impact on them. Teachers who have given them not just knowledge, but teachers who have given these young people the courage to chase their dreams and the confidence to make those dreams come true. I'm really grateful for this opportunity and I just want to say thank you to all the people who can make this happen. I'm really honored and I'm really happy and also really thankful for everybody who got me here. Governor Rees encouraged these honorees and all JPS scholars to continue striving for greatness. You can accomplish anything in life you want to accomplish. You just got to be willing to develop a plan, to dream big, and you got to be willing to work hard to accomplish whatever dreams you have before you. Congratulations to Elizabeth Cantor, Bo Frost, Madeline Hall, Rhea Hunter, and Jane Walker. Your achievements stand as a testament to your determination in your studies.
JPS scholars from across the district celebrated literacy through the lens of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math at the JPS STEAM Expo at the Jackson Convention Center. It's now our third annual event and um, each year it grows. We just added our uh, science fair component to it and we have all kinds of vendors here and of course it's all about exposing our kids to science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Exhibits of all kinds on display, each one a testament to the innovative ideas and the creativity of JPS scholars. Scholars explain the ideas of their projects and why their exhibits are so important. Both of these marbles weigh the same 232 um, grams. So this is the eight and a half inch one. And so that one moved fast. Basically, I started off with four lemons, but after turning it on and off, I realized four lemons wasn't enough, so I added like two more lemons to it to basically make the light shine up brighter. Because the more, the more lemons you have, the more charge you have to make the light shine brighter. My project's on the human hands, and I made a model of the human hand, like the, the muscles and the, and the tendons. I've used it a couple times, but if you pull it down on the string, one of your, the fingers will bend, so like, like a regular human hand. Free books, lively vendors, and concessions and added to the excitement, the making the JPS time. STEAM Expo a memorable and enjoyable experience for all in attendance. I really like it because the children that participate get a chance to see everybody else's ideas and projects and uh, they get to learn from each other. We are a very diverse school district and we want to make sure that our scholars have the exposure um, to various content, but particularly those related to STEAM. The JPS STEAM Expo 2024 showcased projects, highlighted scholar intellect, and brought together the community to witness the remarkable talent of JPS scholars. Cardozo Middle School and we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. The culture of our students and their parents and the parents of our school, it's important. And also we want our students who are not Latino Hispanic and not Spanish speakers to understand that the world is vast and big and that they can enjoy learning from others and even enjoy the culture of others. So it's really important for our students to have this as a learning experience. It's pretty awesome, you know, being able to learn a different language at such a young, at such a young age and you, being able to use it in the real world. We have to recognize how important our culture is to, to now in our generation and how it's changed so much from before. So today we are excited to be at Span Elementary where we're hoping to inspire our next generation of explorers. We are excited about the Artemis program where we'll take the uh, first person of color and the first woman onto the moon. Uh, and so we're talking to the students today about how they can be involved in the space program. The puzzles was really fun. You had to wear an astronaut glove and, and then you had to do a puzzle while you had the glove on. It was really funny. You had to challenge people. Over there, it helped me learn about suns. And then when the sun hit it, it changed colors. So we talked about the importance of gravity to our physical bodies. Well, we find it surprising that a lot of people, even in our own state, don't realize that NASA has a center inside of Mississippi, and so we like to educate everyone and let them know that we're there. Um, also to inspire the next generation. You know, the, the kids that we're seeing today are the Artemis generation. They're the ones that are going to be um, going on to the moon and Mars. Some of the exercises we're doing where they have to pretend that they're an astronaut stuck on the moon trying to get back home, um, seeing them go through those mental exercises and, and discuss the pros and cons of the different equipment and mission and things of that nature. You see them really starting to stretch their imagination and, and realize that they can connect with this and that they can get excited about it. Okay, let's see, Miss Stephanie Peters, can you come forward please? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo!
you are being presented with the Alice Clark Award, Excellence in Education. <laughs> because of all the outstanding things that you did just for, in this young man's life. So I know if you did it for this young man, how many other countless students have you helped over the years? So let's give her another big round of applause. Many people, when they meet Ms. Peters, they think that she is a career uh, teacher who has been teaching for years. And this is actually her sixth year. Um, the dedication that this woman puts into every class, every student, every day is phenomenal. And I just wish that we had um, thousands and thousands of more like her, not just to impact Jackson Public School, but to impact schools across the country. With her academics, she also just reaches out to students she goes above and beyond for the students. Uh, when it comes to the call of duty, she's there. She reaches them academically as well as mentally and physically. She reaches out to parents. She's uh, a part of the community, and a lot of our students not only like her, but the families like her, as well as the community members like her as well. I look at them as my own, so my expectations that I have for my own children are the same that I have for these, and especially that young man. Um, as so many others, but especially there was something about this young man. Ms. Peters one of the best teachers here at Wingsville because she cares about all her students. She makes sure everybody has what they need to pass their state tests and all. And also she she's a very responsible, strict teacher, which I like about her because she's like my mother. But she's at, she's at school, so that's one thing my mom liked about her, and I liked about that also, because she stayed on us when we didn't do our work, and she was a strict person about, like, planning her class and stuff, because she wanted everybody to succeed and be the best they can be. It's just very uh, important that we recognize not only Ms. Peters, but great teachers here at Wingfield, who make a, a like impact in the students that we serve every single day. So although Ms. Peters has been recognized and highlighted and appreciated uh, by this parent and this student, I, I have to speak on behalf of all of our Wingfield High School teachers. They work so hard every day uh, for every student to succeed. And that's what makes our school great. community passionate about the future of Jackson Public Schools, a stakeholder session was held at Kirksey Middle School where attendees provided input to enhance academics at JPS. Specific training for our district while working on the job in the classroom. There's due diligence being done thinking about where we're going and what are the best outcomes we can get for our children. Something that we could do better as a community is try to really understand what the district does, how it does it, and seeing how we as community people can actually help. With changes on the horizon for schools within the JPS district, community input is highly valued. The profile of a graduate and thinking more about workforce development and what that truly is and how to support young people in creating pathways that mean something to them. We invite you to our next stakeholder session on Thursday, April 11th at Cardozo Middle School. Your insights are crucial in shaping a plan we can all be proud of. The district-wide job fair held at Kirksey Middle School on March 2nd has introduced some new faces to the district. We appreciate all the applicants who attended, eager to explore opportunities to become part of our award-winning team. Stay tuned for announcements about upcoming job fairs from JPS. Please visit our employment page at jackson.k12.ms.us slash employment. JPS hosted a professional development day for educators throughout the district on February 16th. We extend our gratitude to both the participants and the presenters for their active involvement in enhancing our instructional approaches. I am unstoppable. 
In celebration of Read Across America, the JPS Heinz Early Learning Collaborative hosted a Read Across Jackson event. In the clouds as the wind moves across the sky. How was your day, summer, sunny, storm, and sky, ex Papa Winters? I'm a great reader. <laughs> but so are you. JPS's youngest scholars were immersed in the wonderful world of books, experiencing firsthand how reading ignites the imagination. This is our first year that we've had Read Across Jackson. This is a precursor to Read Across America Day. Dr. Seuss has been an amazing day. It's important, come through Jackson to read to our scholars. Stop in at our schools. We're doing all kinds of learning activities for them. Tonight we're here to honor the accomplishments and the achievements of the most outstanding cadets in the Jackson Public School District. Each are worthy of the title of Jackson Public School's JROTC Cadet of the Year. JPS JROTC gathered at the Mississippi E Center for an honorary dinner and the announcement of a very special winner. The Cadet of the Year for school year 2024-25 is Cadet Charles Travis. <laughs> I would like to thank all of Callaway, the administration, for allowing me, for taking me in as a person and allowing me to grow. I would like to thank, give special thanks to my JROTC instructor. JROTC Cadet Charles Travis has been promoted to the rank of Cadet Colonel and will serve as the Brigade Commander for the 2025 school year. Visit our website at jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools, on Instagram at JPS Student Voices, on Twitter at JPS District, Comcast channels 18 and 19, and YouTube at youtube.com slash JPS ITV. You're watching Jackson Public Schools television on Comcast channels 18 and 19 and streaming on our YouTube channel at JPS ITV. Did you know? American jazz singer, songwriter, and producer Cassandra Wilson is a 1973 graduate of Murrah High School. Cassandra Wilson's talent as a singer, pianist, and guitarist, composing songs that are a mixture of blues, country, and folk music, have earned her two Grammys, a marker on the Mississippi Blues Trail, and the respect of a whole new generation of jazz singers. See who else is a notable JPS alumnus by visiting our website, jackson.k12.ms.us slash alumni. A big turnout for the JPS Special Programs Fair at Kirksey Middle School, where unique learning our... Good evening. The Jackson Public School Board meeting is now called to order. Board members, we have four members present, therefore we have a quorum. We've all had an opportunity to review the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Dr. Harrison is moved. Ms. Hilliard is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. We've all had an opportunity to review the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the March 5th, 2024 regular board meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Mr. McGuffey has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Dr. Green. Thank you, Dr. Sebag. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, board members, and to everyone who's joining us. We'll begin as we typically do with our um, highlights reel from the ITV team. Ms. Brewer. A surprise presentation by WAPT to McLeod Elementary first grade teacher, Lysia Brewer. These are first graders. They're some good, strong workers and listeners, and they're just a wonderful group of kids. Selected as the Alice Clark Education Award recipient. 30 years here in McLeod. For her dedication to educating JPS <laughs> scholars. If you have a passion for the kids, that's the, the main reason to, to seek out for to want to help the kids, because they need it. 
Did you all know that the more you read, the smarter you will be? In celebration of Read Across America Week, JPS scholars across the district engaged in reading activities. Making sure that they are proficient in their reading skills, it matters that we build a community around that. Community members who read to scholars, emphasizing the importance of literacy and imagination. I want to see the end of the rainbow. And never mix up your right foot from your... Left. Your left. They are competing against each other in fiction stories and nonfiction. To wrap up Read Across America Week, Cardozo Middle School hosted a reading fair. Revel in literacy and how much we love books and a culture of books. JPS scholars showcased visual displays representing books they read. Like happiness to just imagine it because it's a fantasy world and you get to just create it in your own way. It's impressive to see them be able to articulate what they've put on the board. Displays were judged for creativity and imagination. Great information and helped me to be able to understand what is really going on. Many scholars were honored with awards for their hard work. We gather here to witness the transition of responsibility from one dedicated leader to another. The focus of our program is leadership and character development. A gathering of family, friends, and JPS JROTC cadets. New cadet leadership, including brigade commander, was formally installed, marking a significant transition in the... JPS JROTC program. You are the future. Thank you all. God bless America. One team, one fight. Have a great night. And now, a look at some of the renovations happening at Pecan Park Elementary School. Here was an area that we call the greenhouse. The translucent ceiling and translucent greenhouse panels on both sides. They leaked are installing a new standing seam metal roof and new curtain wall windows on either side. On either side, we removed the stucco. We've installed the vapor barrier. We'll get new exterior doors here. See the black piping that we see everywhere? That's part of the new drainage system to carry the water away from the building. But this section of the of the building will receive uh, cementous panels instead of the metal wall panels. The um, entrance way has been squared up. We've installed the vapor barrier. Contractors are starting to install the clip system, the rigid insulation for the new metal wall panels. The concrete here was report and the new structural staircase installed. Some of the new um, air handling units that are being installed in all of the classrooms. The renovations include new chillers, new boilers, all new air handling units for each office space, classroom, the cafeteria. Completion date will be July 15th for all of the interior work. We may be still ha working on some things exterior, like the sidewalks, we get new sidewalks and canopies at each entrance. Visit our website at jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools, on Instagram at JPS Student Voices, on Twitter at JPS District, Comcast channels 18 and 19, and YouTube at youtube.com slash JPSITV. As always, we want to thank um, our team for uh, providing us with those updates. Uh, lots of really cool things uh, continue to happen throughout our district and just excited to bring all of that to you. We are keeping busy, board members. <laughs> um, several uh, quick updates that I want to provide, uh, and I'll try to be brief with these tonight. Um, one, I do want to just uh, highlight that we've done, we've, we've continued, well, I'll speak to this first. All right, so. <laughs> Uh, announced today, the Mississippi Department of Education um, has shared the finalists for the 2024 Mississippi Administrator of the Year, which happens to include our very own Dr. Sarah Harper, principal of McMillan. We are very, very proud of uh, Dr. Harper. Um, we. Uh, continue to be just so impressed by her work and just thankful for her her leadership uh, here in the district and um, we are confident that uh, she will bring it on home to JPS the uh, state administrator of the year and that she won't stop there <laughs> you had 
I just whispered to Frank, I taught her when she was an undergraduate student. <laughs> well, you're the reason why she's the <laughs> soon to be state ad administrator of the year. Wonderful you're the reason. young woman. Wonderful. <laughs> We're, we're very proud of her. And so the Administrator of the Year program honors an administrator who demonstrates superior ability and inspires teachers, employs exemplary leadership, and practices and participates in an active member of the community. And so it's more than just leading your school, but what you do in the broader community. The recipient will receive a $5,000 stipend and will share their uh, expertise through various presentations and professional development offerings and activities. Um, for the improvement of education throughout the state. The, um, the uh, Administrator of the Year will be announced April 26th. So keep your eyes and ears peeled um, because we're hopeful. Is there any kind of campaigning that we can do? Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Mr. McGuffey, <laughs> I, I certainly wouldn't tell you no. <laughs> I don't even know who makes the final decision, but I'm just confident that we've got a strong case. All right. Um, in addition to that, I just want to share um, a few other things. We, um, we've continued our efforts around strategic planning. I met just last night with our um, teacher advisory committee, met, uh, I believe it was last week, with our parent advisory committee. Um, I'll be meeting short or soon with our, our scholars and, and continuing even work with um, our, our uh, administrators uh, just to get a good sense of uh, their feedback on the current um, strategic plan, uh, where we believe we've made some real progress and where we believe there's still lots of uh, room for improvement. Um, and we've run the gamut of feedback from you know, really, really thinking creatively and critically at the vision and mission statements and um, any pieces that might, might be missing there. It sounds like there's still lots of strong commitment to those statements, um, but there are a uh, few things that folks have brought up. One thing in particular was about community and accountability, um, uh, separately and together. Um, uh, uh, in those statements. And so we'll continue to gather information um, and uh, we'll be working to try to piece that information together and even to bring back at um, the next convening of stakeholders on April the 11th uh, some drafting of, of language for the strategic plan and, and um, where there may be some um, uh, competing priorities start to share a bit of that. So just wanted to give you some feedback on that. It's continuing uh, to work through the process. Um, also in our planning, uh, our facilities repurposing advisory committee met last week, was that last week? Met last week, um, or m met on March 7th, I think it was a week before. Um, they had a very, very productive meeting uh, following a request for interest, a RFI that we issued uh, focused on three properties in particular, Baker Elementary School, French Elementary School, and Woodville Heights Elementary School. Um, we got a little bit of feedback and, and interest in those buildings. The interest seems to be more broadly in a um, uh, one or more of our facilities and not specifically those. So we're um, continuing to consider the interest that's, that was shown in those buildings. But we had some conversation with the advisory committee. Um, generally, they're prepared to move forward with um, actually demolishing those properties, which is what our team has, has recommended. Um, but before we go there, we will be holding on April 4th a community meeting at uh, Cardozo um, Middle School just to uh, make sure that we get any final um, feedback from community members about those three in particular, remembering that we've got about 20 plus other properties uh, around the city that we may, um, may utilize for or that individuals or entities might utilize for one purpose or another. But um, all in all, the repurposing committee um, is continuing their work. Uh, at the next meeting, uh, and I believe the next meeting is also on April 4th, 
of the repurposing committee, facilities repurposing committee, we will uh, finalize, my hope is that we will finalize the criteria and the process um, going forward for all of our properties um, and issuing uh, requests for proposals or making them available for sale or lease or what have you, um, and, a, and a clearer timeline for each of them. Conventional wisdom around that is that we not just put them all out on the market at once, but that we batch them uh, based on several criteria, um, ones that may be uh, in a particular area or where we've already seen or heard some interest or um, where there seems to, where they seem to be in better condition for move-in uh, use and that sort of thing. So um, our committee will help us to think through which ones we issue at which times and, and, and not flood the market but give some really close um, focused attention to a group of those properties and then moving on in a, in a rolling basis to consider uh, repurposing. Um, but wanted to give you that feedback. We're excited to um, continue and, and to see some, some forward movement. And I will tell you that following the uh, community meeting on the 4th at Cardozo, we'll, um, we will determine you know, at that point if we're ready to come to the board with a, a strong recommendation for uh, at least those first three buildings that I mentioned, um, Baker, French, and Woodville Heights. All right. I uh, want to do some or share some follow-up uh, information regarding optimization. Um, as you'll recall, we, um, uh, as we're planning to close out uh, the year uh, for and, and operations at some of our schools and, and some consolidations in that. Along with that is the required rezoning of schools. Obviously, you don't just close um, you know, 11 or more schools and not have to redraw lines. So a part of that work is redrawing the boundaries, the zones, for each of our individual elementaries, for middles, and for high schools. Um, as we've gone further into that and, and we've worked with our enrollment teams at um, regarding um, just the space at the schools, um, our facilities teams, and, uh, and school leadership, of course, and our transportation team, um, that has really helped to inform uh, some of the, the work around zone, school zones. And so our teams are finalizing communications out to, to families, and we should have that out in the next uh, few days in terms of um, where scholars uh, are being zoned and um, any carve-outs that may exist as a result of um, any changes in their school assignment, um, and especially with regard to siblings and um, if a family should um, uh, need to retain their current um, assignment at a school, what that will mean for them with regard to transportation. We've got, we've got to, we've, we've had some real challenges, and I think the board knows this. We've had some real challenges with our transportation service. Um, we don't want to go into another year um, with those same challenges and not being able to deliver our scholars to school on time consistently every day. And so we're having to make some really tough decisions around that. Um, and so that too, again, is, is uh, informing some of the decisions around school boundaries and, and zones. Uh, so more on that, on, on that issue, but just wanted to lift up that this work is continuing to unfold and, um, and that we'll, we'll be communicating more directly with, with families and, and scholars regarding their school assignments uh, going forward. Uh, talked about the Administrator of the Year. I want to share, um, Dr. Merritt is actually returning back to the district today, traveling back today, but he's represented our district at the Legislative Conference of the uh, Council of the Great City Schools. Uh, it was held in, in Washington, D.C. Um, but he re has reported no less than three times, maybe four or five times to me, specific celebrations and accolades that our district has garnered at this one conference. Awesome. Um, and I'll, I'll share a few of those. 
Dr. Ray Hart, who's the executive director of the Council of the Great City Schools, and many of you know of or, or has, have done some work or communicated with Dr. Hart um, as a result of their work with us. But Dr. Hart uh, emphasized the notable advancements in both reading and math um, achievement, uh, as was highlighted in the recent national reports. Um, about our work and, and especially our acceleration since the pandemic. And, and that, of course, is the work of all of our, our school-based teams, our teachers, our school leaders, interventionists, counselors, all the folk, families, our scholars, all the folks who are working really, really hard to ensure that scholars meet with success. But that was highlighted um, at least twice at this conference. In addition, Michael, Dr. Michael Casserly, who is the former executive director of the Council of Great City Schools, and, and he too has done some work with us. Um, he reported to Dr. Merritt that he's finalizing, uh, will soon release a book, because who's not gonna tell a story? Uh, I'm gonna release a book um, in which JPS is highlighted, and especially the road that we've traveled, the challenges that we faced early on um, but as well accomplishes that we've, uh, uh, we've made and we've achieved over time. Um, we're one of the many districts here, and I believe the overall kind of focus there is the work of um, district leadership and boards and what it takes to achieve um, great outcomes on behalf of children and families. So we're excited to be named in that. Um, yes, a very big deal, and, and a national publication. Um, Wood Peck, who's the executive vice president of Curriculum Associates, a really big curriculum company in the states, um, commended Mississippi's only urban school district for its math success, noting the use of their product, of course, <laughs> Ready Math, um, as our core curriculum in math instruction. But, you know, um, at this point, I'm good with folks attaching themselves to our success. The reality is we did it. Um, and people are taking note and using their platforms to, to acknowledge us. Um, support of uh, the support and leadership of our JPS board um, was acknowledged by, um, uh, by several, actually, uh, attributing the district's gains and our um, our work to your commitment to student success and engaging deeply with us as a school team. And one body of work that they especially, um, again, more than once called out was the optimization plan and, and your willingness to take on these big issues in spite of the fact that they're hard um, and that there is no easy answers there. And lastly, in the accolades division, um, the Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Education, Cindy Martin, uh, shouted us out when she was making some remarks and conveyed her best wishes and support of the work that we're doing here in our district. So little bitty Jackson, Mississippi, um, while we're quietly doing our work here, folks around the country are lifting us up and, and taking note of the work that we're doing. So just wanted you to, to know that our work is not going unnoticed. Dr. Green, that's an amazing report. Thank you so much for sharing. Will the board at least get a, a little one page of each of these accolades that you've named so we can brag? I can. I can. I absolutely will. <laughs> Thank um, can you hold me, that to, hold me to that, Rosa? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. That is so good. And it would be nice if it was attributed to and at least mentioned that we are part of the Mississippi Miracle. Ah. Yes, well, listen, um, when I was in the, in the last few, and I didn't really highlight the, some of the conferences where I've been and, and spoke on panels and that, but um, I've been very clear that it is not a miracle. Um, it is hard it, work, it is hard work <laughs> of a yeah. bunch of the people in this room and, and otherwise doing work that, um, you know, is not always popular and certainly isn't easy. But, um, and so we've been, there are a few of us who have been on message with, there's no miracle there, it's, it's, it's work, it's not magic, it's, it's hard work and sustained hard work. 
So yes, to your point on that. Um, lastly, uh, board members, I want to take a few minutes to recognize excellence in the room. Uh, and that's with our athletics program. Congratulations to the Chastain Warriors, girls and boys basketball teams on their outstanding winning seasons. They are JPS, the JPS city champs, and they went on to compete in state competitions. And so tonight, um, we'll start with uh, recognitions with um, our girls uh, basketball team led by Coach Christian, and she'll be followed by Coach Fisher and the boys team. Coach Christian, are you in the house? I don't see you. There you are. Yes. Do you want to come on up and introduce the, the girls? The Chastain Warriors. <laughs> In uniform. Uh, good evening, you all. I'm Coach uh, Latija Krishna at Chastain Middle School, coach of the Lady Warriors, uh, champions right in front of you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I would like to first thank you all for having us today, uh, welcoming us into the board meeting uh, today to join you all. Uh, first, I would like to recognize Christian Gates, <laughs> Jamelia Nichols, <laughs> Alana Holden, <laughs> Jaleel Bibbs, <laughs> Jakaria Williams, Alicia Clanton, Marquisia Kincaid, Elani Crutchfield, Noel Bryant, Mikhail McLean, Tracy Calvin, Jemiah Scott. Zaya Cavan, <laughs> Journey Ransom, Camoriana Roberts, <laughs> Janaya Williams, uh, and my manager, Danielle McLean. Nice. Nice. Again, thank you all for having us. Superstars, people. Coach Fisher. All right, good evening. Good evening. 
I want to also thank you all for having us this evening. I also want to thank our leadership in our building, Principal Terrell, Principal Whitley. I also want to thank I also want to thank our athletic director, Mr. Darrell Jones. He couldn't be with us today because they, uh, he had a district track meet today. Um, I want to first acknowledge our boys. They are my first back-to-back -back champions. They're not just mm. champions this year. They're back-to-back -back champions. Oh. Oh. Over the past two years, they are 36 and two. Mm. So Ooh. they have been Ooh. dominant. So, that's primarily the reason for our absence today. A lot of them are, they're in high demand, basically. They are AAU teams right now. They have games today. Uh, my young man right here is late for practice because he's going to actually be here today. Uh, he's missing a game because he wanted to be here today. So I just want to really, yeah. Yeah. I want to really just stress the importance of athletics. Mm -hmm. Most of our scholars, they lead the district in attendance. Mm -hmm. They're the best behaved kids in school. Yeah. Correct? That's right. <laughs> Course performance. PL4 scholars. They're in our HIT programs, which means they're right on the edge of being PL4 scholars. So I just want to stress the importance of athletics. Like, it makes a difference. Yes. Yes. And most guys that play on my championship teams, they go on to bring state championships to the city. So I just want to thank you. Thank my assistant coach, Coach Jackson. It won't be that hard to take our picture, so let's get that done. Just practice. They're gonna have many more honors like this, so don't worry. They'll get they'll get used to the camera. Yeah. Right? Amen. Amen. Yeah, they'll, they'll get used to the camera. Congratulations to the Chastain Warriors. I see our principal in the house. You want to stand up and show the people the championship principal looks like. I want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you to the team who's here, and of course to all the players who, and families who were able to be here. Just appreciate all of your commitment to um, your athletics, uh, but also understanding that you are student athletes, scholar athletes, and so we appreciate Coach Fisher, Fisher's um, words as well, the importance of showing up in the classroom as well as um, on the court. And so kudos to you. We, we're very proud of you and looking forward to what, a three-peat? Are we gonna do a, we're going to do a three-peat to the boys? Yes, we can do that. Um, at, at other, as you continue, you know, in other um, pursuits, in other spaces. All right, with that, I want to wrap up. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Sivak. I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Green. And um, just again, shout out to the Chastain Warriors, both the men's and the women's team. Um, just always wonderful to have students in the boardroom. On a personal note, in addition to being an amazing coach, I know Coach Fisher is one heck of a math teacher as well, so I want to lift that up as well. Hey. All right. Um, let's move on board. I don't believe we have any public comment tonight, so I um, lost my script. But effectively, uh, the board does take public comment very seriously, and any community members who would like to make public comments should email their request to Ms. Rosalind Williams at roswilliams at jackson.k12.ms.us no later than 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting or appear in person at the boardroom no later than 5.15 p.m. All right, we'll move on to our uh, agenda now. Um, we have information only items. I'll invite Mr. Warren Bowen with Triage Facility Consultants up to the podium uh, to give us our ESSER 3 update.
Well, good evening. Good evening. It's such, such, certainly a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Warren Bowen. This is uh, uh, Devin Boone. We will, uh, we will be presenting uh, an update from January 16th to February the 15th, 2024. So, Devin? All right. Good evening once again. So we are excited uh, about all of the progress that's taken place throughout the district. Uh, to begin, the top address will be our project updates, scheduling, as well as the budget updates. We'll start our first project, which is uh, Powell Middle School. As of February 15th, we were at 74.8% complete. As of now, though, this project is wrapped up. We have just a few punch list items, so we're excited to announce that this project is ready to have an official substantial completion. Uh, we have the, the, the installation of sinks and the restrooms, boys and girls. All of the classroom windows have been installed, and this project is practically wrapped up. We're really excited about that. Moving forward, we have McLeod. You might see 66.7%, but that is as of February 15th. Just like with Powell, this project is practically wrapped up. We're just awaiting the official substantial completion. All of the boys and girls restrooms have been completed. Uh, all of the, the gang restrooms, staff restrooms, the meal work in the classrooms, that's done. So again, we're really, really excited about the progress that's taking place. Crews worked hard over the break to get this project wrapped up. Next, we're going to discuss Pecan Park. I feel like the video stole some of our thunder, uh, <laughs> but as you can see here, as of the 15th, we are 32% complete. Crews are working intensively to make sure this project is ready for scholars on July 15th. That interior should be wrapped up with the scope of the project. As far as the exterior is concerned, we are trying to have that wrapped up by August 31st. Of course, that will be on our before. That's our push with the contracts there at Pecan Park. Uh, next, we have Career Development Center. You see here, as it's only 2%. Of course, as of now, there's more work that's been done. The demolition has gone well there. New plumbing has been installed. CMU blocks. The scope of the project is going really well. We haven't run into any hiccups. We're looking forward to successful completion of this project in on time. Jim Hill, another big project. We're really proud of the progress taking place at Jim Hill, getting the appropriate indoor HVAC equipment for all of our scholars. You see here the insulation of pipes in the boiler room, which is very, very important. No hiccups at all this project right here. We are on track to be completed, and that is going to be by June 5th, 2024. Really excited about the progress going on there. Moving on, we'll move to uh, Bailey APEC, uh, another project where there is a lot going on. We're really, really proud of the progress going on there. When you go to this, what, this site, there is, you see the metal stuff framing, painting, interior work being done, HVAC work being done. Contracts are working really, really hard to have this project completed by September 1st of 2024. Um, and next, we'll move on to Package B. We are excited to announce that work is taking place. At Callaway, we have a couple of units have been installed. Kirk C, the work has been completed there. We're just awaiting the substantial completion. North Jackson and McWilly, equipment is waiting to be installed, and contracts are waiting with crews to get this project wrapped up as soon as possible. These projects are all on schedule. We're elated to announce that we have the following projects that are substantially completed. You see here on the list, Wells APAC, Boyd Elementary, Wynn, John Hopkins, and Boyd and Green with those window replacements. And we're excited about these projects that are now in contract phase and moving on to construction. At Casey and Northwest, uh, upgrades at HVAC at Casey, Galloway, Span, and Whitten, improvements at Capital City, and really excited about what's in store at Murrow and Provine. So that concludes our updates. And if you have any questions, feel free uh, to, to go ahead with those at this point. Thank you, Mr. Boone. Board members, any questions, comments? Um, I, I just want to say uh, congrats on, on getting a lot of these to substantial completion. These are, um, that's a really cool thing to see as it goes. Um, and I also just want to point out um, just this isn't really a question, but I mean, I would love to get y'all to talk about um, some of the some of the major scopes that we're seeing at places like Pecan Park and West Jackson, and places like um, Bailey uh, over by me, and places like CDC. I mean, these are interior, exterior. The the amount of work that's being done at those sites. I mean, you mentioned they're kind of buzzing. I've been by two of them and seen, you know, it's like a hundred workers. I mean, yes, it's a lot of people, yes. right? Yeah. So um, can you talk about um, just the, the, I know you mentioned this, but the phasing of interior work, exterior work, when we get to make fun announcements, that sort of stuff. Um, okay. I'd just love to hear about it. Uh, um, 
Well, we'll start with Bailey. Okay, Bailey, for example, Bailey is, is a, a, a really aggressively moving project from HVAC. Um, you know, so much of the pipe. You know, we put in a we put in a a, 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 a a chiller system there, a new chiller system there, and um, the piping system has been completed. Now that is a tremendous amount of work because it requires drilling through. Uh, historic buildings, which they really built buildings back then. <laughs> you know, so this is a different ball game, and so um, that is aggressively moving the painting. So what they've done is, and I appreciate this about the contractors, what they did, they secured this place and they turned on enough environmental control um, uh, equipment to allow them to expedite some of the painting in the building. So. Things like that, things like uh, the ceiling systems and the sheet rock work that's going on, the metal stud framing, they have they are really working in sync as a contractor to move that project forward pretty aggressively, along with the roof system. And, and in a place like that, I mean, I, I'm right, I think, but I would just want to get y'all to kind of acknowledge that so that the community understands. Part of that project is also addressing, you know, issues that we that they've had with water in the building. Part of yes. that project is addressing issues that they've had with with issues that they could have with lead paint. It, you know, yes. all of these sort of real safety issues. You talked about HVACs. You can look through this presentation and see the number of places where y'all are where y'all are overseeing projects completely reworking HVAC systems and in some places supplementing those HVAC systems. I think we all know how big a deal that was, especially this past year, but in years prior as well. Yes, sir. Um, so just talk, I mean, just acknowledging the, the the impact on student safety at a lot of these at a lot of these schools tremendous, um, is tremendous. Yes, sir. So. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah, and just underscoring the the yeah, you were getting at this the <clears throat> the the depth the scope of the work at Bailey. And you can tell me if I've got this tiering right. I would probably say Bailey, Pecan Park, Jim Hill, in terms of the the scope of the work happening. Right on point. Yeah. Yes, and, sir. And, and likely the dollars spent. Absolutely, the dollars on each of them. Yes, sir. Um, and we've had to. Um, you'll recall that that Bailey um, were working through this next year, right? So um, this substantial completion date is as it is and there's likely some additional projects yes sir that we'll yes, pick sir. up at Bailey because we're already investing in the building we need to make sure that the building is what we need it to be so some ADA things I believe that will address <coughs> some parking issues and some others and um, some historic issues that right we can't get around right yes sir exactly yes, sir. I mean in pecan Park I mean I, I know that the exterior is is Sort of under wrap, literally under wrap. But yes. um, you go by and see the fingerprint on that building, and you can see how much of it they're touching, and the and the the exterior framework for the staircasing and all this stuff. I mean, it is an incredible amount of work, and the amount of uh, foundational repair, and the and all the stuff that's happened off that. I guess the right side of the, I think it's the right side of the building where they got the new staircase and everything. Yes, it, it's it's a it's an amazing project. It's a lot of work going on, and it takes a good contractor to re really be able to sync all that because it's so easy to get in the way of each other. So very easy. So. Pecan Park will likely rival um, uh, uh, any of our other schools in terms of the uh, appeal. I don't appeal. think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm excited for those babies to go back. Mm -hmm. Go back in there. Any other? All right. Thank you, Ms. Boone. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Bowen. We look Thank forward you. to the next month's report. Yes, awesome. sir. Awesome. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, board members. Next, we'll invite uh, Dr. Regini Scott, our Executive Director of School Support, uh, to take us through a review of our school improvement benchmark results. Dr. Scott. Good evening, Board President Dr. Sivak, board members, Superintendent Dr. Green, and JPS family. The Jackson Public School District Office of School Support presents for information purposes only school year 23-24 school improvement updates for schools that are identified as comprehensive support and improvement, additional targeted support and improvement, targeted support and improvement, and schools at risk. Captured in each report, you will find the following, the overall school proficiency goals, benchmarks one and two assessment proficiency results, 
student enrollment and attendance data, and disciplinary infractions. This month's report was updated to include February 2024 student enrollment, attendance, and disciplinary data for each school. We did get a few questions, um, and so I wanna read those for you and the responses. Is the drop in proficiency rates correlated with increases in the participation rate? Um, there is no evidence that there's a correlation there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not consistent for all schools, and so it just happened by chance for those schools where there was a drop. Um, the second question, do we anticipate improvement over benchmark one by benchmark three on reading and math in all of the middle schools? The following strategies were put in place after term two. One, high impact tutorials began a few weeks prior to spring break. Mm -hmm. So um, this happened at all of our middle schools. The second thing that was put in place was curriculum training has been provided to all teachers uh, with the visas and that is in the area of mathematics. Uh, additionally, uh, all of the middle school division coaches have begun teaching um, with the lowest data, teaching in schools with the lowest data. So they're providing that um, instruction directly to students. And another thing that was, has been provided is support um, has been strategically placed in those schools um, with the lowest performing students so that we can maximize the impact. And specifically, we're talking about our vendors. So um, some of our support days that would normally, uh, for some of the schools that they had two or three days remaining for the school year, well those days have been pooled for those schools that have the lowest performing students. So um, maybe for in the area of ELA, one school, two schools have nine days total rather than all schools possibly having two days remaining for the school year. So that support has been pooled uh, for those schools most at risk. And then our division, uh, middle school division coaches are uh, again teaching in those schools that do not have the remaining support days. Um, the last question we received, could you provide the raw data for the actual number of students that scored proficient in reading and math at the middle schools um, in school improvement following benchmark two? So um, I included a chart there for you and the totals, um, the number of students that are proficient in ELA includes all of our six through eight grade students at each school. So for Blackburn, um, there are 78 students proficient in ELA and 31 in math. Cardozo, 101 in ELA and 23 in math. Powell, there are 47 students proficient in ELA and 26 in math. Witten, 43 in ELA, 10 in math, and Kirksey, 75 in ELA, and 38 in math. I wanna also, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, recall board members that we um, recruited and, and, and hired, brought in additional math teachers um, and specifically our teachers from the Philippines uh, to help to fill the, um, the large number, really, of vacancies that we had in mathematics, many of them in our middle schools and, and in high schools, most of them in our middle schools and high schools. And so in addition to just the, the ongoing tr trials and challenges we've had in math instruction, some of this um, number is a direct re result of just not having the staffing until um, early December or, or mid-December or somewhere around there. And so um, we absolutely expect that we'll see some, um, some jumps coming out of second benchmark into third benchmark. And I believe they're taking third benchmark now. Now. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Dr. Scott. Board members, any other questions, comments? Great, thank you for the updates. All right, board members, next we'll move on to our information action items. Um, we have the um, request to approve the signing incentives addendum for school year 2024-2025. Dr. Knowles is here to provide the same information. He is our director of recruitment, Dr. Knowles. 
All right. Good evening. Good Dr. Evening. Green, evening. Board President Seaback, members of the board. The administration is requesting approval of the recruitment incentive contract addendum for school year 24 25. So, of course, this incentive is offered to new teachers to attract and retain those new teachers to Jackson Public School District in our hard to staff areas, critical need areas, as well as our career pathway CTE positions while always advancing the district's vision, mission, and goals. Thank you, Dr. Knowles. Board members, any questions, comments? Dr. Knowles, I have two questions. Um, the first is, uh, how does our signing incentive stack up with similarly structured retention tools in neighboring districts? Yeah, so we actually, uh, I did an internet search and I called. We actually called all of the neighboring districts in the Metro Jackson area which include six districts. I don't know if you want me to name them all. It's all but, good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we called each one to verify with their recruitment teams and HR departments to see if they offer any incentives, and right now they do not. Okay. And so we're the only district in this area that actually offers a recruitment incentive to attract new teachers to, uh, to the district, which also doubles as a retention uh, incentive as well. So, of course, you know, each teacher that agrees to receive the incentive signs on to teach in that critical need area or a hard to staff a critical need area for the duration of three years over the uh, time that they're with us. And so what I did is I just kind of looked across the country to see what districts in other states offer recruitment incentives and what those amounts look like. And I provided an a example in the report that I provided to you all earlier this week. They haven't seen it as yet. Oh, they haven't. Okay. So our list. Uh, so we looked at Stockton Unified School District in Stockton, California. They provide an incentive up to $10,000 um, with an approximate student population of 35000 So just to kind of give you an idea of how our district compares to theirs. Uh, the closest one will be Stanley County Schools in Albemarle, North Carolina. They offer an incentive up to $5,000, and they have a student population of, excuse me, they have a student population of 8500 The closest to us would be Hartford Public Schools in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, that offer up to $3,000 with a student population of 16.5. Um, Oklahoma Public Schools, uh, they have a statewide incentive, Oklahoma does, that offers up to actually 50000 which doubles as a uh, tuition scholarship for teachers to help support them with certification in those areas. So it's a little bit more involved, but uh, they do offer one. Um, and then the schools in Muskegon County, they offer an incentive up to 15000 and it varies. Uh, the amount varies depending on the school district within that county or the schools within that county and the number of students that they have. Thank you, Dr. Knowles. And um, I also appreciate all the data that you sent in anticipation of questions probably. Uh, but um, and it, So it was very helpful. What's your sense? Is, is it high enough? Is it is it? Is it something, how, how often should we revisit it? Um, you know, what? I, I think we're right on par uh, mm -hmm. based on the needs that we have, the amount that we're offering. I think we're actually one of the better incentives that are offered to new teachers within, that, uh, within our state, really. Um, I think we revisit it on a yearly basis, which I think is uh, right on, on track. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the needs of the district change, we can always readjust the money that, that we have and that we're using to maybe address some other needs that we have for staffing and certification, uh, maybe to focus in on some of those key uh, harder to staff areas that we know we have a hard time finding, such as special education, elementary ed, and definitely mathematics. Doc, if you don't mind, why don't you, for the public and for those who might watch this online, just quickly name the tiers mm -hmm. and, and the stipends or the incentives absolutely so we That's offer good. three different tiers the the first one is our critical need tier uh, that focuses particularly on content areas like English uh, special education science uh, I hate to name them like that but I may, might miss one but that one is up to five thousand dollars which is spread over three years we tend to front load the incentive so they'll receive half the first year uh, twenty uh, twenty five hundred the first year fifteen hundred the second year and then a thousand the third year. So the, the first one is really enticing to really want them to commit to receive that sizable bonus and then make sure that we have them for the remaining uh, two years. The second tier will be our hard to staff, 
this focuses on mathematics, elementary education, uh, English as a second language, all of those very hard to staff areas. So we offer 7,500 for those, 7,500, and it's structured same way. We front load it, they receive 2,000 the first year, my math, no, 3,500 the first year, 2,000 the second year, and 2,000 the third year. Mm -hmm. And then for our CTE incentives, those are our career pathway incentives. We put those in place just last year to help support staffing needs at our career development center uh, in order to compete with the industry for yeah. the professionals that will fill those spaces. We offered the $10,000 bonus and it's front loaded as well. 4,000 the first year, 3,000 and then 3,000 the last year. That's great. Um, just so I know, are these, uh, are these sort of Stackable. You mentioned this thing in Oklahoma, and that's what made me uh, made me ask the question, right? We've got kids who are going into middle college. We've got um, we've got connections with other universities. It, are those people eligible to, for these incentives as well? I mean, so yes, right. Currently, we are stacking. So right. a lot of the, quite a few of the individuals who are receiving the bonus now may have started out as a provisionally certified teacher that right. we supported through our partnerships with. Mm -hmm. uh, local colleges and universities. And so they get their certification in the area of need. We incentivize them on top of the commitment that they've already made if they accept the incentive. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, we're supporting them, but they're also supporting us by staying with us longer. And what I really like about the incentive is that it really, um, people who are already a part of the community who don't really plan on going anywhere and really want to, it incentivizes them to really come in, get the uh, certification they need to be able to have the impact they need to have with our scholars. So. That's great. That, that was, you know, when you said something about the, the tuition incentive and all those sorts of things, that's what, that's what spurred it in my head to think, you know, we've got, we've got scholars who are going to enter into, uh, you know, likely enter into college with a commitment to come and teach and, and they may be eligible to get more money just, just because let alone, and you're making, reminding me, um, national board certification, Yes. though that could be an additional if you earn national board Yeah, because that's a completely separate uh, incentive, incentive and, and fund of money. So if teachers obtain national board certification, they're automatically eligible. I think it's $6,000. It's a $6,000 stipend that they receive on top of their teaching salary for obtaining their national board certification. So. Unless and until we can get the legislature to add Hines County as one of the targeted uh, uh, areas that would add another 4000 right. to the National Board Certification uh, Incentive. Yeah. And they offer that not just for teachers, but also, I think, for counselors and librarians, if I'm not mistaken. How, how would you rate the uh, retention of people mm. that get the this uh, extra money for the district. Yes, ma'am. So the the incentive, the way it's currently instructed, has been in place actually for four years. So mm -hmm. the first group to actually finish just finished this past school year. We had 16 that actually complete, and of the 16 that uh, finished the incentive, 12 still remain with the district teaching in those critical need areas. So uh, totally, we've approved about 162 total through the incentive program, the way that it's currently constructed. Uh, and we've had a 81% success rate. Only 31 teachers have ended up resigning or uh, actually resigning from the district. And so I think based on that, we, we are, we're doing a pretty good, pretty good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dr. Knowles. Really appreciate the update. Um, I believe, board members, this requires an approval. Uh, so is there a motion to approve our um, teacher incentive program? So moved. Second. Dr. Harrison has moved. Ms. Figures is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Next, uh, we have the request to approve the CTE program changes for fiscal year 2025. Dr. Cook, our principal at the Career Development Center, will present this information. Dr. Cook. Good evening, Dr. Sebag, board members, Superintendent Green, and JPS family. Uh, the administration is recommending board approval of the CTE program changes for fiscal year 2025. And <clears throat> Excuse me, upon this approval, 
by the school board, uh, the CTE program changes will be implemented beginning in the 24-25 school year. Uh, these uh, changes will be uh, the addition of a unit of computer science and engineering at Murrah High School, two units at Callaway High School being computer science and engineering and family and consumer science, and our final program change will be a program conversion to business marketing and finance at Provine High School to support their uh, business academy. Thank you, Dr. Cook. Board members, any questions, comments? That's good news. <laughs> well, uh, just one comment. I, I, my, the most interesting thing uh, to me in here um, was the, the sort of Q&A that you all provided talking about the um, local area needs assessments and things like that. And, uh, you know, I just think um, looking at the job, you know, the work that y'all did, looking at the job market, trying to figure out where the opportunities are for our scholars um, is laudable and is, and, and, and is frankly really interesting. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but um, I, I just wanted to kind of lift it up, uh, the, the data that y'all were looking at to, to do this work. Yes, sir, and uh, you know we're required uh, by uh, Perkins, the Perkins, um, to do an assessment of what workforce is like in our area. And you know Jackson is a little different than the greater Hines County area, and uh, for all of our current programming, there does exist need in the workforce uh, for what we're offering. And uh, what these additions will do for us at this point is still expand into our enhancement programs uh, to get that. And I'm pretty sure that next year we will have some significant changes yeah. in light of, you know, some of the economic development that is coming to our area. Great. Any additional questions coming? Um, the only uh, thing I'll flag, did you uh, note the um, – I, there was, you got it? Okay, thank you, Ms. Williams. It was just some, some language and uh, support letter. All right. You know, board members, we have a lot of these. I don't think they're controversial, so we're just going to take them all at once and, and do vote on the end. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cook. Uh, we'll invite Ms., uh, excuse me, Attorney Harris uh, to the podium to um, request approval of the Legacy Scholars Grant Agreement between Equal Justice Initiative and the Jackson Public School District. Attorney Harris. Good evening, board members, board president, Dr. Seabag, superintendent, Dr. Green, community members. The Office of the General Counsel has recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the grant agreement between the Equal Justice Initiative and the Jackson Public School District on behalf of its Career Development Center. The Career Development Center applied for and was awarded a Legacy, Legacy Scholars grant to cover the cost for 40 students and four chaperones to visit the Legacy Museum from enslavement to mass incarceration, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, and the Freedom Monument Sculpture Park in Montgomery, Alabama overnight from April the 24th through the 25th. The grant will be used to cover the cost of transportation, meals, lodging, entry into the museum, and other reasonable costs associated with traveling to Montgomery, Alabama. The amount of the grant award is $7,235, and this will be our first overnight trip for the scholars. I caught that piece. Great. Thank you. Um, any questions, comments? I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm just excited. Mm -hmm. Excited that our students get to experience this, and especially the new Memorial mm -hmm. Park. I haven't seen it myself. It wasn't open last week. Right. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, we, we all learned as a group that it takes more than one trip one day to see That's the museum. Fine. So mm -hmm. we're excited they're getting the opportunity to yeah, have more time there. This is going to be good. I wish you, you all, I don't know, I don't know if y'all could or not, but visit the Mothers of Gynecology Park. Where's that? It's there. Okay. Right around the corner. It's what, really what nice. Mother of Mothers of Gynecology. Oh, okay. Park. Oh. They have funding, too. All right. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you, Turner Harris. Thank you for continuing to provide leadership to this really important body of work. Um, next, we have the request to approve an amendment with Edmentum. Uh, Mrs. Blackshear, our Director of Planning and Evaluation, will provide this information. Good evening. 
Good evening. Board President Dr. Seaback, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Green. On, the on behalf of Dr. Evans, the administration recommends amending, amending the agreement between Edmentum and JPS previously approved at the February 6th board meeting. The purpose of this amendment amendment is to eliminate the district's payment for the end of the year benchmark assessment. By doing so, the district plans to increase the payment previously agreed upon in the MOU for the MAP state assessment. The increased payment will be issued to the provider for every student who achieves proficiency, that's a performance level of a four and five, on the state assessment, and the program's duration was also extended to April the 19th. Thank you, Mrs. Blackshear. Board members, any questions, comments? Great, thank you. Next, we have the request to approve, we have the request to approve the request to rescind and revise the 16th section lease agreement with Big River Energy to include different appraisal provisions. Uh, Mr. Will Jackson, our Executive Director of Assets and Property, will present this information. Good evening, Dr. C.C. Black, board members, Dr. Green, members of the JPS family. <clears throat> Excuse me. The administration recommends a rescission and revision to amend the March 5th, 2024, 16th section lease agreement with Big River Energy. The proposed, the proposed change is to include a different appraisal provision requiring the property values to be reassessed every five years instead of every eight years. I think that was one of the questions that have been asked in the past. And the second part, the second question was, uh, how would the property be used? It's the uh, construction operation, and they'll be uh, grinding uh, concrete in, uh, concrete in the rock for resale. Great. So the um, the initial lease that we approved has had an appraisal time period of eight years, and this shortens it to five years. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, board members, comments? Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Sure. Next, we have the request to approve the agreement with IMS Engineers for District's Limited Tax Note Program. Mrs. Margaret Purnell, our Executive Director of Business Services, will present this information. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the Board President, Dr. Seabag, Board Members, Superintendent, Dr. Green, JPS family and our constituents. On behalf of Mr. Burke, in his absence, the administration recommends approval of a consultant service agreement with IMS engineers to provide consultant services for the district limited tax note program. Um, this consultant service agreement grants uh, IMS engineers incorporated authorization to support the district's assessment of potential pro uh, projects that we plan to use with the limited tax notes of roughly uh, approximately four to $1 million. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Purnell. Board members, any questions? The only question I had was um, there is a ceiling, correct, in there uh, up to $150,000, is that right? That's correct. And I, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed it, um, but I just wanted to flag that. And so obviously, uh, if, if there's a need to go over it, it will come back to the board with the request and recommendation. That is correct. Okay, great. Thank you, Mrs. Purnell. Okay. Um, board members, uh, Mrs. Purnell is also here to uh, request approval of the monthly financial report for the month ending February 29, 2024. Mrs. Purnell. Okay. Board members, again, the, uh, on behalf of Mr. Burke, the administration recommends that the board approve the monthly financial report for the month ending de February 29, 2024. Uh, first, we'll start off with the um, general funds on the statement of fund balance, if you all all have in your uh, report. The uh, fund balance as of uh, February 29, 2024 was approximately $11.2 11 .2 million, which is about $7 million lower than what it was last year and at this time. The expenditures exceed revenues approximately about $11.7 million. Our 16th section uh, revenue is um, on the rise. We're about 87.9 percent of budget at this point we have collected about eight hundred and eighteen thousand dollars currently also on the uh, special revenue funds that we're working with child nutrition uh, continues to have a significant fund balance um, uh, supporting our school cafeteria operations 
Uh, also to note in that um, the Child Nutrition Program has a plan to spend some of those funds and those dollars for various purposes, mainly to do remodeling in some of our schools that are closed and that will reopen in the fall of this year, and also um, do some different things with the uh, serving line and just different things in the cafeteria as a whole. I know some of the uh, major things that they are working with will also include um, Murrah High School, Jim Hill, and Israel, along with the school, uh, schools that are already closed that they will be working toward to reopen uh, for, at this point in time. Also, on the special revenue funds, there are, we have about $11.2 million is in uh, negative on our state balances and our federal funds on that. Uh, as of the 12th of March, we have requested approximately about $5 million of those funds uh, currently, leaving us a balance of about $6.8 million is still left that we will be requesting later on. Uh, uh, part of that, the reason why we have not or will not have not requested so far is because we have some ESER dollars that has to be uh, revised. There are some programs, I and mean, there are some budgets that has to be revised in order for us to expend on those, to request on those dollars that have already been expended. And those have to be approved through the Mississippi Department of Education. So when those revisions have been um, actually reviewed, and uh, submitted and approved, then we, the district will have the opportunity to request those dollars at that time. Also, on the, um, the budget status, oh, so what I wanted to mention on that, $4.2 million of the six point so that we don't have represents the ESA dollars, is what I wanted to bring to the attention of the board. On the budget status report, um, we have the, the district maintenance, uh, anticipated revenue of what we have collected so far is about 57.8% of the budget currently. The expenditures, we have expended about 63.6% .6 of that budget, which represents what was stated uh, previously, that our collected versus expended is about $11.7 .7 million um, over that amount at this point. The bank reconciliation, um, make a correction, is as of January 31st, 2024, all of our bank statements are with board approved um, depositories and the bank accounts have been reconciled appropriately. Cash flow, as of February the 29th, 2024, our ending cash balance was approximately $5 million. Compared to February 2023, it was like 7.4. That's a 32% decrease from the um, prior position. And um, board um, members, as you may recall, I'm sure Dr. Mr. Burke reported last month that our um, charter school payments was roughly about $1.3 million more than what was the year before. So that does contribute to part of our cash flow difference that you see from the um, five to the 7.4. Other management key performance indicator reports, um, some headlines or highlights that um, Mr. Burke likes to bring to the board's attention is that our overall revenue collected year to date is $3.8 um, million, which is 3.2% less than last year. Our expenditures is 3.9 million, 3.2 greater than last year. Our Avalon year to date is 1.4 less than last year and our personnel and benefits it, uh, is year to date is 898,000 greater than last year. Um, just a few highlights, I think that we all know that um, the, the salaries and benefits contribute to the, uh, the salary increase, so of course it was budgeted and therefore it would be higher than what it was previously. Uh, our Evalorum, as we all know, uh, board you may recall, that what we do is we take the, the charter school payments are reduced uh, from our average loan um, collections. So therefore, that 1.4 pretty much represents part of that 1.3 that we're less, that we do not have in average loan collections at this time. So we kind of on target for where we have been in the past. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Purnell. Um, I have two questions. Uh, okay. The first one was you mentioned revisions to the ESSER payments. Um, what was the reason for the, the, the need to revise the, those payments? 
Uh, mainly, I think the, uh, some of the issues are with some of the projects that we have at different schools and in the closure of the, with the optimization plan, with different things where we have to move some expended, you know, some budgets from one place to go to someone, someplace else. So in order to do those, we're going to have to make some revisions in order to get that done. So that's where some of those revisions are done so we can um, move forward. And, and Doc, <coughs> excuse me, Doc. Um, you know, you've been good about asking pretty regularly, are we on track to spend those ESER funds? These revisions, um, this, is a, a, this is one of the strategies helping us to spend all the funds. When we get down the road and have a bid that we have to reject or um, a project come in, comes in a bit over what we had uh, anticipated, these revisions help us to move some of the money around so that we're not stuck with the original plan and the dollars aren't spending, we wouldn't be spending down the dollars as originally anticipated. And so it's through these revisions that we're able to move those dollars, either leftover dollars to another project, or if we find that, oh, this, the timing of this work, or we can't get it done, or we can't get the chillers or whatever, if we can't get the supplies in, in time to expend it and get reimbursed, then um, the team is having to rethink those projects. And that's happening pretty um, um, regularly. Mm -hmm. okay. Whether it's, whether it's a, a lot of it, uh, um, as I understand, and um, Dr. Scott uh, can speak to any of this, a lot of it is around um, the, the facilities projects, but there are other um, projects as well. I believe we moved some money even to support the, um, some of the tutoring. Is that true? Did I just make that up? No, you didn't. Okay. That's correct. Yes. Um, we're supporting a lot of the instructional projects, um, the initiatives that we have in the district uh, for all of our divisions. And so to make sure that we spend the funds in a timely manner and meet the needs, we're meeting regularly. We meet tomorrow um, with Ms. Robinson and Ms. Franklin so that we can make some of those construction revisions. And so we just want to make sure the money is where it needs to be so that after it's spent, Ms. Purnell can draw. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. It's a really iterative, as you're hearing, it's an iterative process. No, oh, that's, that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, and then, Mrs. Purnell, the other question I had was just around the ad valorem. So I know February is a big month for ad valorem. Um, how, how was it? Did it come in under, over, expected? Actually, it did come up. It came in, it came in over. It did, we did okay. pretty good for the month of uh, February. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, approximately overall with all of the Averloam funds that came, it was about $41 million as compared to $39 million that we got last year. But that's not all district. That's, right. that's uh, all over all of the funds that that service along with that. Uh, the district portion of that may have been close to maybe 30 some million because as you may recall, in February we did pay the uh, $20 million plus back mm -hmm. on the um, TAN, mm -hmm. the tax anticipation note that we did take out in um, last year. So we were able to pay that back and that's what we normally use those funds mm -hmm. during that time to do. So it came in pretty good on that one. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. No All right, board members, any more questions? If not, thank you, Mrs. Purnell. Is there a motion to approve items B through G? So moved. Second. Mrs. Thompson is moved. Ms. Hayard is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Next board, we have our consent agenda oh. items. Finance, all of the uh, agenda items for finance have been reviewed by the board previously, and we had an opportunity to ask the administration questions. Board members, are there any further questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Mr. McGuffey has moved. Ms. Figures is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Next, we have our consent agenda items general. The board has previously reviewed all of the consent agenda items, and we have not had an opportunity to ask the administration questions. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. <laughs> Ms. Hilliard moved. Mrs. Thompson is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Next, we have the consent agenda items personnel. All of the consent agenda items personnel have been reviewed by the board previously and we've had an opportunity to ask the administration's questions. Are there any further questions? I have one. Dr. Green, 
I noticed that there is a position in there for virtual high school. Yes. Um, when do we anticipate the opening of our virtual high school? Let me call up our assistant superintendent for high schools, <laughs> who would be happy to respond to that. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. We will anticipate our virtual high school program <laughs> to open um, for the 24-25 school year. We will open our applications um, mid-April through mid-May, so the application period will be over, open for approximately one month. And we will start with interviews, and our families will know if they will um, be accepted into our, our small pilot, 75 scholars in ninth through 12th grades, um, starting in August. Say another word just about um, who we're anticipating yeah. serving. Um, we, we really wanted to provide an alternative option for our families. Um, we have students that are, um, have severe medical um, needs and we're trying to, to um, support those scholars. We have students who um, just need a, another option because life has kind of turned them around and they want to pursue um, and complete their high school um, experience, but coming in daily in, in that particular environment is not the, the most beneficial um, for them right now. We're looking at scholars that, um, who families, the students experience anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. We still have students right now who have se se severe anxiety as a result of COVID, and those students right now are being homeschooled. And so what we are looking for now is to, to provide an additional option for, for our families. Mm -hmm. Just for clarity, this is district only. Right. This is not some open. This is not an open enrollment program, as it's That's like correct. being pitched in the legislature right now. No. That's correct. Yes. No, okay. this is for our scholars only. Um, it is for scholars who, for example, we have in district transfers. So we have a family that wants to complete an in district transfer into our district to participate. Then we would go through our regular process. That you know, mm -hmm. those students are presented to the board for approval. Great. Very exciting, another uh, innovation. Innovation. <laughs> Dr. Green's, um, he, he's been pushing for this for, for some time now, and so we're just excited to be able to bring this to fruition. Well, we look forward to updates on it. Um, thank you, Mrs. Marshall Thomas. Okay, board members, is there a motion to approve consent agenda items personnel? So moved. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved, Ms. Thompson has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Uh, board members, we do have an item to consider for executive session. Is there a motion to close the meeting to consider executive session? So moved. Second. Dr. Harrison has moved. Ms. Figures seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Good night, everyone, and thank you. Bye. Good night. Please. We begin with scholarship. Scholarship, come forth. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours reading and studying. Service, come forth. Service is my office. Service can be established in the routine of the days of work where many opportunities arise to help others, both at school and in the community. Leadership, come forth. Leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school in taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. Character, come forth. Character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. Each inductee was introduced by a parent. I'm pleased to introduce Elizabeth Cantor. My name is Shannon Frost, the proud mother of Bo Daniel Frost. Madeline is a JPS student through and through, and she would not be here today without the hard work and dedication of the faculty, staff, and fellow students in the Jackson Public School System. I'm so proud to introduce my daughter, Rhea Hunter. Rhea is a fifth grade student here at Wells. Uh, my beloved Jane, uh, she's 
more than deserving of being here, and I'm so, so, so proud of her. Special guest speaker, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, praised these young JPS scholars for their remarkable accomplishments. Behind the students being honored here today are teachers who have made a lasting impact on them. Teachers who have given them not just knowledge, but teachers who have given these young people the courage to chase their dreams and the confidence to make those dreams come true.